Joining us now is Republican Congressman from New York, Mark Molinaro. Thank you very much for joining us. Always good to see you. Um, you tell me, what sort of speaker do you need? I think actually that's that's a good place to start. I, I'm not committing to a person. I need the person to commit to a couple realities. One, we are functioning in a bipartisan government, and any solution to any American problem needs to result in bipartisan agreement. Uh, so I need a speaker who recognizes that. Uh, and I've, I've said this before, uh, and, and whether, whether viewers or not uh, agree with me, um, no one person in Congress worked harder to help certainly us secure the majority and, and support members like me uh, than Kevin McCarthy. And he had three, four years to accomplish uh, my support or to secure my support. Uh, the men and perhaps women who wish to be Speaker of the House now, it's about seven days. But there needs to be a commitment to that reality that we have to govern. We have to deliver on our commitments to the people that I represent and to America as a whole. What are you hearing from your constituents? And I, I believe you're back home today for, about what's happening in the House. Yeah, I came home for about 24 hours. Um, I've been thankful to be involved in a lot of really important conversations about moving the needle, right? There are members like me who, who need us to, 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 to stop the bomb throwing and focus instead on delivering. Um, the, the folks I represent, you know, in upstate New York, we, we, we know what it's like to have a government that's dysfunctional. We, we, we too often see it in Albany. Uh, what they want are results. They, they couldn't care less about motions to vacate or some so, so, uh, psycho pseudo political uh, theater. What they care about is are we going to fight inflation? Are we going to secure the border? Are we going to help the most vulnerable in our communities? That's what they want us to address. And I need the next speaker that house uh, to hear those voices, to give us a seat at the table, and to make sure we're focused on delivering on those things. Jim Jordan is a firebrand in purple places, and especially among Democrats, I'm sure among some of your constituents as well. He's leading an impeachment inquiry into President Biden on, on no confirmed evidence. He has been a very loud voice for the Freedom Caucus. In the past, he shut down the government, although now he says he doesn't want to do that any longer. Do you think a Jim Jordan as speaker is going to help you win election again in, in 2020? Twenty-four. So I've spent a lot of time doing what I tell people I, I do on behalf of members like me and people uh, like the ones I represent, and that's I'm listening, and then I'm making I'm making certainly my voice heard before making any any determination on who's uh, who's speaker of the house. But you but know let me who Jim Jordan that, uh, is. It, it, he's not a surprise. No, he's been around for a long time. You know who he is. No, I, this is this is what I tell people. Um, uh, every every human being has the capacity to rise to the moment. So I don't accept the premise that no one person could could meet my expectation, and that's. That's truly a horrible argument to make. I, I think at the end of the day, I need somebody who's going to commit to, to giving voice to the people I represent. And uh, right now, I'm not willing to commit to anybody, uh, but rather uh, hold them uh, accountable uh, and try to seek the best representative, I think, uh, to get us back to governing. What about the hold the, the extremists in your party have on your ability to do anything? And I, and I don't just mean people like Matt Gates. I mean outside forces. The New York Times is reporting on what Steve Bannon has been doing behind the scenes, and they write this, from, his, from this cave-like studio not far from where Congress meets, Mr. Bannon, the former Trump advisor, has been stoking the chaos, now gripping the Republican Party, capitalizing on the spectacle to build his own following and using his popular podcast to prop up and egg on the GOP rebels. How do you govern when you have somebody like that who can be so influential among enough members in your, in your conference? to shut the government down. So I, I think, uh, again, there are members like me who are committed to governing, and the overwhelming majority of the of the House uh, Republican Conference are, in fact, committed to governing. Uh, and let's be let's be uh, respectful here. Uh, both parties have individuals who dwell in cave, caves uh, and, 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 and brew chaos. My focus and our focus has to be um, uh, bringing people together, molding the consensus and governing. And I think there's a good number of us, and certainly enough of us, to get there. And, and I just would offer, um, you know, I, I listened to uh, my colleague uh, was on the show just a few moments ago. Um, you know, this is a question for democracy. Uh, everyone has the choice. Do you do you stand in, in support of the institution and the people you represent? Or do you point across the aisle and say, hey, that's your problem. Uh, we, we gladly celebrate your, your demise. I think we all have to take stock uh, and be a part of the solution and, and simply but suggesting that. how do you that, deal with the extremes yeah. of your party? And the Democrats, and I'm not going to get into 
argument here, but the Democrats will say, you know, we've never ousted a speaker before. The Republicans were the first one to do so, and you were able to do it because one guy, Matt Gates, uh, no, had no, that no, motion. I, I take issue so, but hold on, I let me ask you, how do you govern? Yeah. I know the vast majority of the Republicans want to work to get things done, and they're in the camp that you're in. But there are enough Republicans who, who don't seem to agree with you on fundamental issues like how to keep the government open. I'll, you know, the CR was passed by the majority of Democrats, not the majority of Republicans. How to keep the government open, how to get to bipartisan legislation on big issues like immigration, which is a massive story and it's affecting this entire country. It's my way or the highway. Don't you need to find a way to figure out how to, how to work with the other side? And can you do it? when you have those, you know, rebels on your team. Except the premise, if Democrats, when they were in charge of the House, wanted to confront immigration, they would have confronted immigration. But let's be, let's be clear um, that at the end of the day, we both parties have to function in a bipartisan manner. You're right. And so members like me are saying whoever's the next speaker has to confront the rules to in, in, ensure accountability. We can't allow any one person to upend uh, uh, the, the House Congress or undermine the work of, uh, of, uh, of this federal government. But, but no, the Democrats didn't sit on the sideline and it wasn't the result of one person a, a few days ago. And I've lived through this as a, as a New York elected official. I've seen what one party rule looks like. I see what corruption looks like. You have a choice. Last week there was a choice. We could uphold the institution or simply point across the aisle uh, and side with one or two, maybe members of my party, uh, and undermine the institution. There, that was a choice that certain people made. I don't think it was right for those eight to make it. I don't think it was right for 10 or 15 good, decent Democrats to, to simply suggest, hey, it, it, while well, your house is burning, uh, we're going to add some kerosene to it. I, I think all of it is, I think all of it is crap. I think the American people are tired of it, and they just want uh, members like me to, to, to focus on delivering real results. And I actually understand governing. there's a lot of anger. And I think we can. I Directed towards some Democrats as well. One quick question, and we're out of time, so hopefully you can answer this quickly. Will you support a speaker who does not change the rules to make the motion to vacate um, something that can only be done with more than one person, a majority of Republicans or somebody in leadership, change the rules so it's not just one guy or girl? We'll only support a speaker who's committed to working toward that solution, because otherwise we're not going to be able to govern.